I'm so absolutely sure that we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure of that. Yeah, but the thing is, you really can't be sure of anything, can you? Because you're limited only by your um, a few dozen to a couple hundred senses that you have. You know, your entire perception of reality is unique. You know, filtered through your own biases and uh, what limited information um, that you can glean from the world that isn't influenced by your uh, your subconscious reaching for assumptions to to uh, to make shortcuts of how the world works and and it manipulates your eyes. That's how illusions work. You know, your brain is tricked. Your brain tricks your eyes. Your your feelings, your perceptions of the world is all a shattered reality. It's a facade. It's bullshit. You know. Anyway, next slide. Oh, I can't wait to try out milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another let's try out video i'm proto dead and today we're going to be trying a game called milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk so yes you've heard that right it's milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk which is the sequel to the critically acclaimed milk inside of a bag of milk inside of a bag of milk and i literally do not know what this game is about. I think it's kind of like a text-based adventure game, but we're going to find out together. I think I think now I've even said the name wrong. I think it's milk outside a bag of milk. Outside a bag of milk. I got through too many ofs in there. Going to hit that English. Flashing images and touches on heavy topics. Take care. Okay. F is full screen windowed mode. The so boom, full screen. That's going to solve that problem. Oh, the game just starts then, I guess. Okay, so this is gonna, probably going to be loud as fuck. A little fuzzy. A little soft. 47, 48, 49, 50. She's counting stairs. That's what I'm thinking. store is closing soon. Moo! Whoa! What was that? She's got red eyes. Like a demon. She's got some folding money. Hello, can I... Buy this bag of milk outside of a bag of milk. I'm guessing those are apartments. Our iris has got huge. It won't take much time. What do you see? Well, I see glowing gnats and stuff around a street light. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Anyway, it's... Oh, shit. The high-rise building. How would you like to live in there? Hmm, interesting. So why have we focused on steps several times now? Yes, Mom. <laughs> Milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. Continue new game. Well, I haven't started a game, so I guess a new game. Was that just the opening cinematic? Oh, those are like eyes, like creature eyes. Ooh. I'm walking to my room trying not to look around. Okay. Do I hit a button? Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. 
One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. So I'm left clicking through this. Uh, w, A, S, and D doesn't do anything. F. Oh, shit. I forgot. F is uh, full screen. Q and E doesn't do anything. Space. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning a joyful dance. Yeah, so the black and red, you know, it's pretty powerful, pretty pretty powerful imagery. Silhouettes, I like silhouettes. They're powerful, I think. So they got the black and the red thing going on. That's colors that are like high alert, danger, you know, pay attention to me. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here, it says. Mom told me to go to bed. Ooh, time to fade to darkness. A door. How scary. I walk past the kitchen on my way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. I like that idea. The thing that you can't see what's beyond the door and it's cold and what's cold must be coming from the door and the thing on the other side of the door is something supernatural. Aha, that's so silly. I'm so absolutely sure that we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure of that. Yeah, but the thing is, you really can't be sure of anything, can you? Because you're limited only by your um, a few dozen to a couple hundred senses that you have. You know, your entire perception of reality is unique. You know, filtered through your own biases and uh, what limited information um, that you can glean from the world that isn't influenced by your uh, your subconscious reaching for assumptions to to uh, to make shortcuts of how the world works and, and it manipulates your eyes. That's how illusions work. You know, your brain is tricked. Your brain tricks your eyes. Your your feelings, your perceptions of the world is all a shattered reality. It's a facade. It's bullshit. You know. Anyway, next slide. Oh, she's running. I break into a run and dash towards the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me? <sighs> Excuse me. Um, cut that part out, will you? Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know, and it doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hand around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death, but wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually only revives them? No, 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 I don't want to do that, what do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside, but there was a bag of milk that I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with his unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? What if I... Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mother's kitchen. A bag of milk? See, here in America, what in tarnation? Down here in the, in, in the south of America, we ain't got no bags of milk. I mean, if you're really cheap, you can get a bag of cereal. But that's like, you know, the cheap imitation generic. You can't get no sugar smacks in a bag. You get is sweet, sweet bites or whatever it's called. 
but ain't no bags of milk around here. On the other hand, nobody would drink the milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world into the scary unknown, and I'm so sorry, you poor thing. How interesting. Imparting the, uh, I turn away shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. Damn. So anamorphic. I think anamorphic is the word whenever you, uh, you impart humanistic qualities on uh, non-human either objects or animals. Anamorphic? A anthrop anthropomorphic? I'm confused, but that's what obviously is happening here with the bag of milk, I guess. I'll walk towards my room through another, a narrow corridor. Ooh. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. Ooh. My kitty cat knows how that feels. Isn't that right? Athena, the kitty. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. Let's just stay silent and ensure its tight grip. And endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. It's got all sorts of tentacles. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out his ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Ooh, again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move, ooh. The creature squeezes my hand until my veins start bulging and I just keep staring into the black cavities where his eyes should be, ignoring all of the pain. I've promised so many times. So apparently this has happened quite a bit to this young lady. Stay put, it says. Stay put. I can't do that again. The moment it says that, ooh. Its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, the claw injects its venom into me. Ooh, double entendre. It hurts. A white veal veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor just like last time but why why do I feel so hot I feel my blood boiling up strong shivers run through my body paralyzing every single cell while my veins and arteries heat up almost bursting from that pressure I try screaming but instead of producing words I vomit thick milky foam the creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me. Kill me, I guess is what I say. The girl, the woman, the protagonist of the story. Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Ugh. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint every... <sighs> Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I tried to imprint everywhere every drop fell in my memory, so I could gather them all later. I need to remember, I need... New wave of pain washes over me, everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it, I'll never drink milk ever again. Oh, apparently it doesn't like milk. I... Say it. 
I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. Jeez Louise. finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all the fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed. I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection, and it shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was this time when the last minutes before I slept were my favorite time. They were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable, inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. Yeah, I like me personally. I like that moment too when my leg jerks me back awake. I woke up for that moment's sake. Lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. That would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. As if someone fished them out of my head one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. And now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. It's a lot of pills, man. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, chew on it. Do anything to stall just for a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film but I can still discern its contents. So, oh, is that her face in the background? Like hovering there, looking at the back of the sink somehow? Okay, so it says, what do we have inside you? Gently, I press the capsule from both sides and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy. Filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way that I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill. The same blood red color. There were some letters printed out of it printed out on it. Excuse me. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep that I want. It's not it at all. It's a fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides until I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. Hey.
Is it getting brighter or is that just me? Hey. I hit space and left click, nothing's happening. What's going on? I hit enter, nothing's going on. What's the dealio? Okay. Yeah, I'll save the game, but I mean, game saved. Oh, I got a mouse over and click it. Weird. Hey, long time no see. It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. Or, you know, we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? <laughs> who am I? Who who is she talking to? It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. I'll say that. There you go, bullying me again. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? Pretty exhausted after today? I guess you are too. That's not true, she says. You need to go to bed. No. You've been in control for way too long already. My turn now. Alright. Happened at me for. You okay? How's the VR headset? <laughs> ben? I'll cut this part out too. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, alright? I'll just stay silent until the medicine effects wears off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully, she thinks. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. And I say, hmm? I'm so energetic, I feel great. Which means I can do anything, and you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. Hehe, <laughs> I can only imagine how angry you are right now. Yeah, I'm all beside myself, or what made you so happy all of a sudden? I think it's a manipulation trick. And why would I be sad, she said. Remember yourself a couple of hours ago? I don't know what you mean, she says. Every choice is stop lying. But which one, the top one, middle one, or the bottom? I'll go with top. Nuh-uh, I still don't understand. I was just looking at the room. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. She says, don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're still together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now. Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see, yeah. Hi. Am I ready? Am I really that pathetic? I don't say anything. Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes into them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried, she says. Go wash your face. And then we'll decide what to do with you. I'm in front of the mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection. Try not to get distracted. Try not to get distracted by the sneery looks on the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. 
But then, me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bares its teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I had sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind, two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. But my head is splitting apart now. Sorry for being rude, or how do you feel? Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault, she said. It's never your fault. Fine, you can go on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know. Yeah, but you ought to know how challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Undoubtedly, whatever it was, it was your decision. Hmm, I'll go with that one. Does it even matter, she says. And what do you think? Yes or no? I'm gonna go with what do you think. Can't be sure about anything. And you don't take me seriously anyway. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but then I feel I tripled it in force. It hurts so bad. Just go drink your medicine already. Or I'll stop talking to you. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the one pill after another, chasing away any unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. You okay? Yeah. How's the how's the VR headset working? But spring went back an hour after a moment. But No screen cutouts, audio cutouts. Okay. Everything's annoying. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture of lumps of coagulated blood in a, tr in a in transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. Shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you more. Much more than pain. Yeah, I guess, she says. I toss the last pill into the air, catching it with my mouth. I lie on the floor looking at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I can hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. Do you want to talk about it? No, I've had enough talking.
What do you want then? I just want to lie down for a bit. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out into the ceiling in orderly rows. Now that's my cork board. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, I start over. Can't do it. And always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming. Like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts are fireflies now start whirling over the ceiling on their own accord, forming a whimsical pattern. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings from the ceiling make me start to lose my patience. Enough, I hate you. I sprang to my feet and screamed at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job, now start over. No way, she says. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. So that doesn't bother you? Did it? What do you want me to do then? I don't know, it's up to you. <laughs> You're at it again, what do you mean? Never mind. I've changed my mind anyway, please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look to the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fire probably seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Forget about that and go to bed. No, you don't get it. I'm thinking about something, I need to finish my thoughts or else. Finds around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide there. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening, deafening rumble. The clock is about to strike midnight. It's so late already. I can't go to bed right now. Would you help me? Please tell me that you will help me. Holy shit. Okay, I'm fucking done. I'm done. I'm done. Can't do this. As you guys know, a Let's Try Out video is a part Let's Play. There's going to be some commentary in here, a part tutorial you learn as I learn as I play the game, and part first impressions, because a lot of these games I've never played before. And uh, you get to go through, step through all the problems that I step through, and, and hopefully we come out the other side learning a little bit. And kind of a part review, because I try to rehash a little bit of my opinions at the end of the piece. After we read the words of the developer, we can try to make a decision whether they're shoveling us a load of bullshit or if they're spot on honest and it seems to make a lot of sense with what they're trying to, uh, the product that they're trying to produce. And if you want to spend your hard-earned money on it, because at the end of the day, I'm trying to give you an honest 
presentation of the first 30 minutes or so of a video game really is. That way we can make a sound judgment on it. So let's read the words of the developer. So yeah, I can't really uh, read anymore. My voice is starting to mess with me a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just read the words of the developer. Milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk is a sequel to milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. Dive into demented and bizarre world once again and help the girl become a little happier. These reviews are overwhelmingly positive. All the reviews, um, there's a little over 6,000 reviews. This released in 2021 by Nikita Koryarev. Developed and published. Some of the key features is a psychedelic narrative full of pyramidal verbal constructions. Whatever that means. I mean, I like the psychedelic narrative, but... Stylized pixel graphics, which reflect the girl's distorted perception of the world. Yes, we saw that, and it looked good. High variability. Each playthrough is unique. However, some dialogue lines, images, and scenes have only a small chance of appearing. You'll have to get really close to the girl in order to find out everything she hides. Hmm, interesting. I don't know how many hours the game is supposed to be, but I really, for some reason, just kind of feel like that whole beginning section that we just played through couldn't have been much different than what it was. I don't know. Maybe it's totally different every time. Um, an oppressive and viscous soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really notice the music, but I guess there had to have been some there, and maybe it did its job. So anyway, this is Proto Dead. If you like this sort of stuff, give me a like. Um, subscribe for future content. Tell me what you think about milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. And um, until the next time, I'll catch you on the flip flop. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. And since you're here, why don't you go ahead and leave a like on the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Sound off in the comments below about any other opinions that you might have. I appreciate you stopping by. Subscribe for future content. Share my video with a friend if you can. It helps me out a whole lot. This is Proto Dead saying I'll see you in the future.